How are these South Park characters created? Believe it or not, they are based on real people in Trey Parker's actual life. Yes, even a talking piece of crap. And no, I don't mean Tom Cruise. I'm gonna sue you! But first, let's take a detour into a quiet little mountain town. Co-creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone have never officially confirmed if South Park was inspired by one single location or town. However, many believe the cartoon location is inspired by the town of Fairplay. Fairplay is a small town located in what is actually called South Park Valley, and it once used to be named South Park. Where Parker reports, Growing up, all the stories would come were like, oh, did you hear they found another UFO? These cattle mutilations, <laughs> and it was like, where? South Park. Which is why these events are heavily featured in the pilot episode and sprinkled throughout the show's run. Series creators have never stated where South Park is. In the series, South Park appears to be more of a suburban area with modern housing and high-rise buildings, where Fairplay looks like the same old mining town when it was founded in 1859. Fairplay is interestingly enough mentioned in the season 3 episode Jackasaurus as being 4 miles away from South South Park. This does seem to show that South Park was always meant to be its own fictional town, taking inspirations from multiple locations in Colorado, but there's no definitive answer to the question. But in Fair Play, you can find random South Park characters hidden away in different local spots, from a display on Main Street to a hidden Mr. Hanky on the front of a nearby shop, and even one pottery store which has transformed into a South Park museum. In the episode The Scoots in Season 22, there is a map displayed during a town meeting. The neighbouring towns pitched around were Fairplay, Hostel, Breckenridge, Leadville, Como and Mala Vista, having South Park sensed in the middle, backing up the argument South Park is its own fictional town. Stan was lightly inspired and modelled after series creator Trey Parker. He shares his Marsh surname with Parker's paternal step-grandfather. Stone specified that Trey and him used to make silly voices in college, which became Kyle and Stan. We got in trouble for in college. Trey and I would always get thrown out of class because we did this one stupid voice that basically sounded like Stan and Kyle. And his foul mouth, just like the rest of his friends. As Parker and Stone claim, that's how young boys talk amongst themselves when alone. Kids acting the way kids really act because there are all these things at the time about, you know, the precious innocence of a child and how, you know, basically adults were all corrupt and children were all wonderful. Some fans of the show think that Stan may be partially based on Parker's childhood friend, Stan Goff. In an interview with Vulture, Park acknowledged that Goff was an inspiration for the character, stating he was the most real down-to-earth kid in a sea of fakeness. Kyle was based on a little version of Matt Stone. Just like the character Kyle, Matt Stone is also Jewish, but we didn't know this until the age of 16. But there was a Jew at my school named Greg Geller at my junior high that got beat up every day because he was Jewish, and that's probably when I figured to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Beneath the big old green hat, Stone sports a big curly afro, just like Kyle in the show. When we finally see him without his hat in the episode How to Eat With Your Butt, revealing a huge red afro. This is the same hairstyle to Stone's character from Cannibal the Musical. Trey and Matt's first theatrical movie. His parents are even named after the characters in the show, but was his mum a big bitch? Kind of. Mum wasn't this big of a bitch. She's a pretty big bitch. Stone also has a sister named Rachel, but creating a character for her in the Broflowski South Park family was ruled out because they felt Stan and Kyle were already too much alike. Instead, they gave Kyle an adopted younger brother, Ike. Out of all the characters in the show voiced by Parker, you think his favourite is Stan or Cartman, or one of the other boys, as they're the centre of South Park. However, Trey Parker said his favourite to voice is none other than Randy Marsh. What makes this funny is Randy Marsh's voice is based on Trey Parker's real dad, who is a geologist just like Randy in the show. Not sure about the huge testicles part, but to be fair, all known pictures of the guy are taken from the waist up. In an interview with SBS The Feed, Trey Parker explained why he loves voicing Randy Marsh the most. First started doing the show, I was doing an impersonation of my dad. Now <laughs> That I'm way older, I'm just doing Dude, my voice. <laughs> this is why Randy has a much more prominent role in the show now, due to Trey identifying with the adults more than the boys. Randy has quickly become a fan favorite character from his cock magic skills, spontaneous fights, and his love of cooking. And I'm still confused why he hasn't gone Facebook official with that chicken. Oh, yeah. Real Randy Marsh also has a great sense of humor, telling Trey that more crap was his favorite episode, which sounds a great and hilarious father son relationship, if you ask me. How did Trey learn drugs are bad, other than the Oscars? Trey had a counselor in college called Mr. Lackey. Worst one is, and he could so sue us, I had a counselor, Mr. Lackey. <laughs> and it was the first time I started doing voices because he'd walk down the hallways and go, how's it going today, boys? And we'd, and we'd all go, fine, Mr. Lackey, how are you doing? It sounded just like that. I mean, that's not an exaggerated version of how he talked, that's how he talked. And then Comedy Central came to me, is this based on a real person? I was like, yeah, yeah, but his name was Mr. Lackey, not Mr. Mackey. <laughs> <laughs> With one TikToker even providing proof that he knows Mr. Lackey by showing his yearbook from 1994, 
which includes a picture of the councillor and you'll never guess what his first name is. Leanne Cartman is loosely based on Trey's ex, who cheated on him one month before they were due to be married. I was engaged to this girl, Leanne, who uh, we were sort of high school <laughs> sweethearts, and aged for a year, everything, friends had plane tickets, the dress was bought, the church was paid for, and uh, about a month before the wedding, she decided to start sleeping with this guy in an acapella group. He well, he was in an there. acapella no, group, no. you know? He even based a horse in Cannibal the Musical on her. A horse named Leanne who oh, leaves right. him and how sad that is. And who she left for an insurance salesman at Foley's, and Trey wants to give her the constant reminder of her self-sabotage. Hi, I'm worth $7 million, and she's, she's with the manager of Foley's. Whoops! <laughs> she was, though, recently at Red Rocks trying to get Trey to notice her watching the South Park 25th anniversary concert, which seems appropriate to her being in a place with a lot of banging. Anne was written to South Park as Cartman's mum, being the town slut appearing in Crackcore magazine and other questionable movies. But even though she has this promiscuous side, Cartman's mum has a good heart and means well. I'm guessing the real Leanne may have regretted her decision later on just a little. The character of Eric Cartman is based off Matt Cartman, who is good friends with both Matt and Trey. Cartman was apparently the slightly overweight and late bloomer of the group that had a sharp tongue for comebacks. He was teased a lot more than the rest of his peers, which forced him to develop hard-hitting insults. Later in life, Cartman lost the baby fat and takes, in his words, high-level karate classes, bragging that he would bung sour your ass. But knowing Cartman, that could just be a huge exaggeration just to intimidate. Trey got the name for Cartman when a group of them were trash-talking during a football game and one friend blurted out, Shut up, Cartman. Trey, who had been sitting quietly in the corner observing this brofest, blurts out, Cartman, that's the perfect name for the fat kid. But Cartman's personality in the show is also based on Archie Bonker from All in the Family. They alleged in 2008 that creating Cartman as a little eight-year-old fat kid made it easier for the two to portray a Bunker-like character. Trey describes the way he does Cartman's voice is by doing stands but adding a lot of fat to it. <laughs> When developing Carmen's character, Parker said everyone either remembers an annoying fat kid in their past or they were the annoying fat kid. There's also rumours that Carmen was heavily inspired by Boris Johnson. The character of Butters is loosely based on South Park co-producer Eric Stout. Parker and Stone got into a habit of calling him a goody-goody as he hates to offend just like Butters. They decide to develop Butters as a more regular and returning character after being irritated by his geeky behaviour during their production of South Park Bigger, Longer and Uncut. Both Parker and Stone then made the decision to transfer Stout's traits to the character Butters making his speaking debut in Two Guys Naked in a Hot Tub. And he's like, no, I never told you. <laughs> All crew members used to refer to Butter's character as Puff Puff and Swanson. He kept being named by these in storyboards and all the scripts until it was finalized as Butters. Butters slowly but surely became one of Parker and Stone's favorite characters, and so they decide to create his very own episode for the show. We're going to put you in the show, Butters. Yeah, and he's like, well, you better not, I'll get awful mad. Which was the fifth season finale, Butters' very own episode. As the name suggests, it was dedicated to Butters entirely, as well as his parents. Stone describes his character as embodying permanent innocence. Butters, however, funnily enough, thinks of himself as a problem child, all because his parents make him believe it. Eric Stahl could almost be Trey Parker's little brother. Plenty of people believe he is, because of his looks and sweet behaviour just as a younger version of Parker could be. Stout, the inspiration behind Butter's character, has been close friends with Parker since middle school and is an important part of South Park. He has even been part of the animation since the very beginning, helping with the spirit of Christmas. Stout explains the name Butters was originally just a nickname given to him by Parker. It was a mutation of the word buddy, quoting, Trey told me that I'm the most anchored person working on the show and I think they were looking for a contrast to the character Cartman, he says. The nickname came from the idea of Buddy, Goody Two Shoes, and then Trey went through this phase where he had a tendency to add errs to the end of everything. I hated the name at first, but then I started growing into it. Now I'm honoured that they've modelled the character after me. This character was conjured up for a series of prank phone calls from Matt and Trey after ordering from the fast food restaurant City Walk in Colorado. We were doing a sound mix, I think, for Orgasmo, and we called a City Walk. There was, we wanted Chinese food delivered, and there was a City Walk, and a person did answer the phone and went, City Walk, take order! And it was like, and they had shitty chicken and, I mean, city chicken and city beef. Shitty shrimp. And it was just, we were just laughing our asses off. And we did that thing where, during the sound mix, we would call City Walk all the time to order food just to hear the guy say shitty beef and shitty chicken. <laughs> God damn, my God! Mr. Garrison is a combination of two people. When I was in kindergarten, there I had a teacher, the name was Mr. Hat, and it kind of looked like that. This was during a time when Trey lived in Nashville for a short while. He says the schools down there around that time were so dreadful, 
and we got taught by a hand puppet. The teacher would actually put Mr. Hat, a puppet, on, on her hand and then put on a record that was Mr. Hat teaching us and talking to us. <laughs> he claims that's what the lessons were like all day. Imagine if the puppet called in sick for the day, the school would be screwed. But Mr. Garrison was inspired by a teacher Trey had at the University of Colorado. He was a British lit teacher who would speak to the class as if they were in kindergarten, saying everything was always silly. <laughs> and everything was everyone being kind of a big silly. So we all had Beowulf. Now, Beowulf was a big silly, wasn't he? Why did he go fat Grendel? That seems silly. And that, that became Mr. Gary. <laughs> Not sure about all the other stuff he's done over the years, such as getting his ball snipped on national TV and hiring a hitman to shoot an egg, but who knows? Trey Parker's family all share the same first name as the Marsh family in South Park. His sister, Shelly, who is three years older than Parker, was brought into the show as a whiny bully. This was due to the fact growing up, Trey had to constantly endure his sister's abuse. And Trey did casually say in the commentary for an early season one episode, She did throw me down a flight of stairs once. That doesn't make any sense because that TV's not plugged in. Right. Which no one commented on, just carried on the convo as normal. The abuse got so bad that Trey actually confronted his sister like Stan in the episode. I actually said, you're my my sister and I love you and she beat the hell out of me for saying that. My sister gets all the time, it's like you're the Shelly Parker from South Park <laughs> and she hates it. Now Chef's origins are a bit messy. There are several people on Reddit that claim Chef was based on a big jolly black guy at Colorado University in Boulder who is in fact a chef who used to happily give people advice when they had problems. I'm not sure about the singing part and if he's the one who told Trey where the clitoris was. This is just a few people repeating the same stuff on Reddit. I don't know the validity of what they are saying is true. There's also one rumor that Chef was created while on the set of Cannibal the Musical. With one source saying, yes, only one source, Chef was a fat black guy Trey and Matt saw when they were high on acid during the making of Cannibal the Musical, who kept saying, watch the children, y'all gotta watch the children. Another Reddit user claims the name Chef and the connection to Isaac Hayes comes from the common mishearing of the song Shaft. If you listen to it, it sounds frequently like they're saying Chef instead of Shaft. Surprised not much else is known about the character development for Chef as he was a very iconic character in the first nine seasons. Towley has to be one of the dumbest character stories I've ever heard. But to be fair, what did I expect the grand story would be about a talking towel? It all took place during a writer's retreat where Trey and Matt and several writers were wakeboarding. I, I remember that some people were getting in the boat and someone yelled out, don't forget to bring a towel. And then I went, don't forget to bring a towel. And Tally says, don't forget to bring a towel. And then it was basically, there, there was Tally. And it Taking the most random character possible and integrating him into a whole episode. Trey said Mr. Hanky and Towley sounded too similar so he got one of the writers on South Park to voice him. Also wants to milk the merch like every show does when it introduces a new character. That's why a Towley commercial appears through the episode, advertising loads of fake merchandise. America's President Discover Card Supplies are limited to order one of these- now I think everyone knows this has been mentioned a lot, but Kenny was Trey's childhood friend that used to wait at the bus stop and had a big puffer jacket. My friend Kenny, who at the bus stop all the time, he had the little orange coat, and he would always say sh we couldn't understand him, we're like, we can't f understand you. <laughs> the classmates made a running gag that he died as he barely showed up to school, which Parker incorporated into the show. A Reddit user claims to know the real Kenny, and he's doing a lot better now after escaping from his poverty-stricken life. He's now a cop and is said to hate the show South Park. Shame as his character's had a big redemption since how he was portrayed in the first season. And now, my friends, it's time for the winner of the giveaway. Just wanted to say a huge thanks to everyone that subscribed and who entered the competition. First of all, well done to Whoopi Toast and H Sparks for winning the art comp. Your artwork for Cartman Randy made me laugh the most. And now, the big winner for the Tweak and Craig giveaway. The way I determined a winner was by using a random number generator on my phone. Congratulations to Batman Pikachu, whose bio says just a nerd, but no, my friend, you are also just a winner. But be quick, as you have seven days to claim your prize. Otherwise, we choose another person at random again. Thanks to everyone who entered, and there will be more giveaways in the future. Consider subscribing if enjoying the content. Thanks for watching.